we're here to talk about The Lost Adjuster this time, right? A nice Christmas festive film yeah. um, with a, a great British cast as well. Were you friends with any of them before you did the film? Oh yeah, uh, Martin Kemp, it, we've been friends for years because uh, um, Shirley and him were, have been friends for years and worked together and I inherited that friendship over like two or three decades. Uh, what's it like working with Joan because she is a legend anyway and is she just as fabulous as I imagine she is? Uh, probably more so, I have to be honest. I, you know, I, I make movies often and, and, and I had to really stay on my toes. We had a dialogue heavy day. She was super on, on her game, like, and really likes to have it done right. But then as yeah. soon as there's a moment to pause, you know, she's the legend she is. And I've known her on and off sort of, you know, every now and again, I bump into her at an event or something. Yeah. And then I saw her on the set and she was glorious. And uh, I feel, I would say I'm a friend of hers now. She's wonderful. I mean, you're the guy who's kind of down in the dumps in the film. So there was a lot of horrible stuff happening to you in the film. But what was the most fun thing that you got to do? Oh, dear. I mean, I'm a character crying, nearly. It's a one day story. So I spent three and a half weeks boohooing. Um, <laughs> I think most of the fun side of the story comes from, especially now, I mean, who would have known? I think this story is about a man or a woman simply having to gather some self-worth and maybe standing up a few inches. To, I, I bought myself like a five or six inches shorter and very nervous disposition. And I think at the very edge of a nervous breakdown, and I think I've experienced that when I was younger and I know it's not pretty within. And uh, sometimes all you have to do is stand a little straighter to just at least combat some of that day, you know, and, and I don't know, it's a timely, um, British comedy and all British comedies are, you know, depressing slash funny. So <laughs> how we do that, I don't know. I was going to say, though, what do you do when you're having a bad day to kind of get yourself out of it? Are you someone who just kind of mopes around or do you kind of like, right, snap out of it, Luke, like get on with your day? I own it. I do accept the fact that some days it's OK to feel down. It's OK to feel overwhelmed. It's OK to feel somewhat, you know, how am I going to get through this? But it, staying close to say something creative, play some nice music, watch a comedy, do something. These are these are remedies that, you know, I'm no expert, but I think stimulating ourselves in a sense of uplifting, yes. staying busy, doing something the weekend, throwing a Frisbee, whatever you can do to it's it's about joining in. And I think it's really important. You only need that one degree, don't you, to, to hit yeah. the earth and the moon or whatever that analogy might be. But uh, yeah, I think you've got to stay on the side of positivity and keep yourself busy. For you, what are the ingredients that make a great Christmas movie? I think a good Christmas movie is about, I mean, there, there are classic movies out there, like Miracle on, is it 32nd Street or 34th? <laughs> 34th Street. Thank you. Um, <laughs> filmmaker, I should know that. Um, <laughs> but I think those movies that overcome some kind of adversity, something that's there's an injustice there or something that's, you know, because of goodwill, Christmas spirit and something, and then maybe something even angelic or something ethereal, something that lifts our spirits and gives us hope. I think those movies, that, and I think traversing through something and coming out victorious, like any movie, but especially at Christmas, I think they, they carry a lot of weight. What's your favorite Christmas movie? It's A Wonderful Life. Oh, okay, classic. Yeah, I do, I like that, I think it's beautiful. And I think, you know, performance is a beautiful, story is wonderful. And I just think it's one of those things that was, it was there before I showed up, it'll be there after I leave. And what is Christmas like in the Goss household? Because you're over in LA, and yeah. for me, it's not Christmas when it's warm, like when it's hot, it has to be cold and miserable, like, or at least snowy, if we get lucky in the UK. So no idealism there whatsoever, right? Nothing. <laughs> so what you're saying is you want to walk the streets of New York when it's snowing with it all wrapped up and cosy and, and window shop. Basically, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's probably a few million people wanting to join it at that point. Um, in my, this year it's going to be very simple. Be honestly, I, um, I mean, just candidly, I've just gone through a divorce. Uh, I mean, I don't know how, how, how openly I can say that now, but that's the truth of it. So I think there's an adjustment there. Um, I, 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 my brother's in Vegas. I'll be here or, strangely enough, countering your point, I might find my way if I can find an island that would have me. I, <laughs> I could do with some, some sun and some surf, and I think it might be living in the world of idealistic dreams right now, but I could do with some of that if I'm on. Oh, amazing. Well, thank you so much. It's lovely to see you again. Well, and the most glamorous person I've done an interview with this year. So oh, wow, thank that's you. so <laughs> Thank you so much. I will take that.